got a request to do a coming out video. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it because I, I can't track down the request. I'd usually post it in, in here. If people wanna hear it, absolutely. And if you guys have any requests of, of what you wanna hear from me, post it below. And, and next time I'll, I'll take a screen grab and put it up. I couldn't find the original asking for this. I guess I'll start from the beginning. Um, and the question that everyone asks, when did you know you were gay? I knew I was gay in the second grade. Uh, and I know you're thinking, that's far too young to know your sexual preference. Uh, bullshit. I knew. And you want to know why? It's because of Valentine's Day. Everyone gets a Valentine's Day card in second grade because you, you're in second grade. And, you know, Optimus Prime wishes you a happy Valentine's Day. But some girl in that class found a Valentine's Day card with Leonardo DiCaprio on it. Like his headshot. Because this was in the days of Titanic, 1990 something, when he was a Titanic twink. And I remember even in the second grade seeing his face and being like, this is the most beautiful thing in the world. And I carried it around with me for like, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how long I carried it around for me. But either way, I knew I was into the guys. And then I got a little bit older and um, I, I, you know, I knew I was gay for the longest time. And the first person I really like came out to and had a dialogue about it was this girl, Cassie, who I met on a youth list online. And that's what we did in my time before YouTube and stuff. We, we you know, we had these forums and I met Cassie and we hit it off because we both had MySpaces. <laughs> I just met her for the first time a year ago at a pride parade and we, oh, she's the best. And she helped me design my app and stuff. Whenever I had difficulties with this stuff, I'd go to her. And it was really ugh, just magic. I owe her so much for that. The first person I told to I was close to was this girl Stacy, and as far as I was concerned, she was the funniest, smartest, just best girl, uh, you know. And and I just I wanted to know how she would take it, I guess. Uh, you know, I just needed to know because I respected her so much. And so on AOL Instant Messenger, which is again something that it's pro people probably don't use anymore. I remember sitting at the keyboard and being like, Stacy, I gotta, I gotta tell you something. And she said what? And you know, I'm like, oh, I'm gay, and I type it out and I sent it and I. I'm waiting for a response and you know, and she says this. Okay. I'm like, and I go, what? <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, why is your head not exploding? How are you, how are you intact right now? And she says, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I wanted to be reassured, I guess, that I was blending enough that it would be a huge shock. But what she showed me with just grace and, and understanding was just that, you know, what it could be. It, it might might not be a huge deal, you know? It might not be this big thing that, that's haunting me my whole life. It, I didn't really tell too many people after that. You know, I, I got to high school and, uh, you know, I, I was kind of a show-off. I was the, the class clown. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I think I blended pretty well. I, you know, had the whole flirting thing down and whatnot, and I, I think I covered my tracks. I don't think I was too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I didn't really tell too many people. I told my closest friends, and and I left it at that. I was I was worried about. Uh, I did, I was worried about being alone. I was worried about people turning their backs on me, and just being abandoned for for something I really couldn't control. And so I didn't come out in high school, which is one of my biggest regrets. It was really hard for me to accept myself and and want to tell people and risk the the repercussions. But then I got to college. And, and I didn't come out right away. I didn't get to college and kick the closet door down until I met uh, my friend Suze and Lou. I met them like, you know, earlier that day and we're sitting out on a deck and we're drinking the finest of Franzia boxed wine, Sunset Bluche, if you're wondering. And I told them, I said, Lou, Suze, I'm, I'm gay. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> you're gay and you still had sex with that hot Christine chick that I was trying to fuck? That is bullshit. Okay. Um, what? Son of a bitch. Right, I did. I, guys, I, I used girls sometimes to, to cover my tracks. And that's... It's really... It's, it's my one of my biggest regrets. I mean, using people to, to kind of put out an image without them knowing and leading people on is one of the worst things I think I, I've ever done. And, and um, yeah. Except when I get to bust loose chops about it. <laughs> so Susan Lou knew. And, uh, but I still had to tell my roommates. And I was living with five straight as an arrow. They were guys, guys, you know, they watched sports and, and, you know, did a lot of things that I didn't do. It was important to me when I was telling them to each tell them individually, because I felt that I owed them that space and that time to ask me what they needed to ask without the influence of other people around. I felt like they deserved that. And so I did. I, oh God, oh, I did. I, I started with my roommate, Randy. And Randy had come back from a party, and Randy was super, super drunk. 
and I wasn't helping because I'm all nervous. I'm thinking, oh, like I'll just get like just have another beer in it, and then after another beer and another two beers and maybe even another three beers, I was finally ready to tell shit-faced Randy that I was gay. And you know, I'm sitting there and I'm sweating. I'm like, I gotta tell you something, Randy. And you know, half of me is hoping he won't remember any of this. And I said, you know, Randy, uh, I'm gay. <laughs> Randy immediately gets up, right, and runs the bathroom to run <laughs> and runs the bathroom to throw up. It wasn't because you said you were gay. Here's a lesson for you kids. Don't mix liquor and beer because if you do and one of your best friends just decides to come out to you, you, you may throw up immediately after. So next up was Coop. And, uh, Coop, Coop was my roommate for three years. He knew me better than anyone uh, inside and out, you know, I mean, I, he'd seen me cry, he knew my life story, uh, he knew pretty much everything about me except for this one thing and I was scared that this would be the the straw that broke the camel's back of our friendship. And uh, so I did, and, and you know, he was I, he was sitting and he was watching the game, and uh, you know, he was drinking, and I'm thinking, all right, like, cool, I can pull another Randy. I sit down, and I'm like, Coop, I gotta tell you something. How many beers have you had? And he goes, enough. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, all right, I gotta tell you something. And I looked at him and I said, Coop, I'm gay. And he said, oh. All right, man. You stop walking in front of the TV? I'm World Series is on, I'm trying to watch this game. Um, you know, it was all for nothing. You know, I worked myself up for nothing, and that was that was the hardest coming out that I had, um, honestly. <laughs> and then uh, there was one more roommate to tell, my roommate Gugan. He's a, a BFG, which for people who are not familiar with uh, Roel, he's a big friendly giant. And so he opens the door, and he, you know, he's taking up most, most of the door frame, and I'm like, Gugan, I gotta tell you something. And he says, what? I say, Gugan, I'm gay. And he says, well, I'm moving out. I laughed so hard when he said that. So I told all my roommates, now I'm ready to start telling my extended friends. And so there's my friend Evan, my friend Kendra, and my friend Marcus. So in good fashion, it's Halloween, I am shit-faced, and I'm going to meet up with them at a party, and I'm, I'm on a high now, because I have told everyone I need to tell. As far as I remember, I walked up to Evan and Kendra and Marcus, and I said, hey, guys, I gotta tell you something, I'm gay. <laughs> no. That is not how it happened. First of all, you're standing there dressed like an old western bartender, and then some guy dressed like Zach Braff and Scrubs walks over to us and is like, Oh my god, the love of my life just broke my heart. And you turn, you look him in the eyes, and you go, She'll probably find somebody better. <laughs> you almost started a fight with some dude five seconds after telling me you're gay. That never happened. That never happened. No, that was what? exactly what happened. He legit almost fought Dr. Dorian. <laughs> Exactly, baby. Thank you. So yeah, I told Evan and I told Kendra and I told Marcus. However I told him is not important. But that guy, it wasn't his time. I told him it went well. They were cool with it. And I know you guys are asking, wondering about my parents. I told my mom when we were playing basketball. My mom's talking to me about girls. And she says, you know, something about girls. And I turned around and I said, Mom, I, you know I'm gay. And she goes, All right, that's cool. But the thing is, it's bullshit, because she had read one of my online conversations when I was very young, and she knew I was gay. She loves and accepts me and supports me. Um, and then there was my dad. When I was growing up, he was flying uh, commercial airlines. Um, when I was born, he was fighting in Desert Storm. It was really hard for me to come out to my dad, because we didn't really talk too much. So he came to Penn State once, and we went hiking, and he's giving me all this girl advice, like, never meet a girl at a bar. We date a girl who came into her looks. And I'm having such a good time just hanging out with my dad, I didn't want to bring up the whole gay thing. But after the trip, my brother texts me and he says, hey, did you come out to dad? And I said, no. He said, well, you should have, because he knows. And <laughs> so I texted my dad and I said, dad, you know, thanks for all the girl advice. And he writes me a text back and he says, Steven, I've loved you since before I saw you take your first breath. There's never been any strings or conditions and there never will be. I love you always. You have to understand, this guy sent me a Bible on my 18th birthday. I was worried because I didn't know how he'd take it, but um, as you can see, with, with nothing but love and acceptance. The thing I think I worried about the most when I was coming out is that people would leave me. People who left, I didn't even notice. You know, I was so excited to start my new life. Oh, you, you spend all this time scared, oh no, like what if they don't accept me? And when they don't, it's not a big deal, finally, because, you know, you're so happy with with what you've accomplished. It's never as bad as you think it's gonna be. I mean, I think we always assume the worst in these situations. So the first thing I wrote was this article called Gay Valley, and it was all about what it means to be gay in Penn State. And I wasn't gonna shout it from the rooftops, but I was. I felt comfortable putting it out there, and if somebody stumbled upon it, then, you know, whatever. 
Problem is, somebody commented on it and was like, hey, great job, this was like, you know, a good article or something, and I wrote back, thank you, in the comment section. Without knowing that when you write in the comment section on All Words Date, it posts it to your Facebook. So suddenly, without meaning to, I just, I really did, I screamed it from the rooftops. I came out to everyone on Facebook, you know, my hometown friends and, you know, everyone. I came out to everyone in that moment, and I was so... I don't know if there's an emotion for this. I got so many beautiful messages of support from people I hadn't talked to in years, and um, it meant the world to me. And that was like my real coming out. And after that, I just wasn't scared anymore. The influence of being an out gay man, or woman, or, or trans, or anything like that is giving hope to other people that you can do that. So I think coming out was really important. That being said, there's variables. You really have to do it on your own time and, and do it when you're comfortable and follow your gut. I mean, really, just follow your gut. And you should never, never have to do it alone. So um, I don't, I don't know. I, I hope, I hope this made, I hope this made a difference. I hope, I hope somebody who needed to hear this is hearing this. Pass it on. You know, share your bravery with people and share your story because people like little me growing up needed to hear that kind of stuff. So I hope you guys liked it. Um, I, I was serious about the. If you guys have ideas of videos you want to see me do, really post them below and I'll give you credit. I'll screen cap it and put it in the next video. Um, but yeah, I mean, love yourselves, guys. Love love yourselves, love your, love each other, um, most importantly. If you like this, like it. Um, if you dig what I do and, and dig my messages, please subscribe. Uh, it puts a smile on my face when I see that number going up because it, it tells me I'm doing something right. Um, yeah, all right, and I'll see you guys next time and, and hopefully I'll be doing one of the, the your guys' stories. All right, peace, love, much love, bye. <laughs>